how did you feel when you first were approached by, were you first approached by Jesse, the director, or how, how did this all come to be? <laughs> well, there was an article in The Forward, actually. Um, I, I guess a video accompanying it. It was very well done. Uh, and she saw it there. Um, so Jesse first got in touch with me and you know, you know, suggested the idea of a documentary. Thought she would like to try it. Thought it would be a good idea. Felt it would be six to 12 months of filming. <laughs> <laughs> so my wife and I discussed it and we worked out some details with her. So three years later, um, <laughs> so they completed the filming and you know, it was an interesting experience, I think, for all of us. How long were they in your house, like on any given day, filming you? Um, well, I mean, it wasn't like they were there every day. That would be crazy. Um, they came every, like, probably once a month, and then they were there all day. They would film my doctor's appointments. They would film my workouts. They would film, you saw me going to school. They would just film, like, various aspects of my life, and it was, like, an all-day event when they were there, but it wasn't like they were there every second. Oh, yeah, and they went on trips with us. <laughs> it was fun. I mean, you were going through, you know, a, a pretty pivotal moment in a, in a kid's life while this was all filming, were there ever days where you woke up and you said to your parents, like, I don't want anyone filming me today. Like, I don't like how I look, or I'm just not in the mood? Yeah, um, great question. I don't think it was like days that I wish they weren't filming, it was more moments. Like if, uh, when I had my injury, that was actually the uh, in the competition, that's actually the only injury I've ever had in powerlifting, and it was like, oh my gosh, why did they happen to get this one on film? Because they didn't actually get all of my competitions, they didn't get every second of my life, and obviously there was events that happened in between, but they happened to catch that moment, and it was like, why I don't want that on the film? But <laughs> looking back, I see that like all the ups and downs, and the tears, and the celebrations, and it all comes together to make the film um, a more complete story. And so looking back um, at all of the different aspects, I definitely appreciate it more than I did in the moment. <laughs> what did people in your school think, uh, like friends of yours? I guess first, what did they think when they learned you were into powerlifting? Because, I mean, if I was nine, 10 years old, and I knew that, and I met another girl who was, in, a girl who was into powerlifting, I'd probably go, what? You know, it's, it's so different. Um, what, so first, what did people think when they learned you were into powerlifting and that you were really good at it? And I guess the next, then, the next question is what did they, how did they feel when um, all of a sudden cameras showed up at your school? You're right. Um, so when my friends and school first found out that um, I was a competitive powerlifter, first of all, my teachers were really confused. Like, what, this girl is eight years old. Why can she lift more than me? These, these children are so small. Like, what is this? They were all very confused. I think my friends, because I was little, I was eight, nine, I don't think any of them really understood what I was doing or what that meant or what powerlifting was or like anything. And they were just like, oh, that's cool. You go and you're on TV sometimes. <laughs> I know her. <laughs> they didn't really know what was happening. But um, as years went on, they actually got to appreciate that, whoa, you're actually really strong and breaking world records. And now my friends think it's really cool. And I have an amazingly supportive group of friends now that they, they are just like so supportive of every step of my journey. And they think it's amazing. And they're so happy for me. And I'm really lucky to have friends like them. And when cameras started filming in my school, uh, well, <laughs> everyone started freaking out because obviously there's a camera. Everyone wants to be in it. And so they all thought that was really, really fun. And um, actually, I found out recently that most people in my school, when the cameras came, didn't actually know that it was for me. <laughs> they didn't actually know there was a documentary. They didn't know what it was for. They just saw cameras and got excited. <laughs> How did you feel as parents I, you know, what was that decision like to allow someone into your home and not only, you know, into your physical space, but also, you know, I, I don't know, did you have approval about what the movie was going to look like? I mean, you here you were putting your whole family on display. What was that decision like? I'll probably get emotional and cry, just so you know. Um, I think that Ari and Naomi are children four and five for us. We have five kids. They're our two youngest. And I think with our journey being parents, there are so many things in life that we kind of want to hide, that things are not perfect, that you want to always put out that best face for everybody. And we decided 
um, along the way that when things happen, like the diagnosis of Ari's autism, that this was just part of life. And a lot of people have parts of their life that is not perfect and it's not picture perfect. And if we can share our struggle with other people, maybe we can get support from them and we can support other people. So when it came time to do this film, yes, it's unusual, but she's just a normal kid and he's a normal kid. And why not? Why not do that? Um, does it feel us leaving vulnerable? Yes. <laughs> and sometimes people are hateful? Yes. And more times people are not hateful. More times people are supportive. And even if they don't understand what we're doing, they want to support us in the journey that we've chosen for our family. Um, you also asked, did they give us any control over what went into the film? Uh, the answer is no, and interesting you asked how, what our reaction was the, when we first saw it in the Hamptons. Um, one, of the, one of the things they wanted to see is how did we react to it, mm -hmm. because we had seen it for the first time. And it was interesting, some of the people involved with uh, preparing it, deciding what goes into it, because they had hundreds of hours of uh, video to condense to the movie, uh, all reacted to us as if they knew us so well, because they were right. used to seeing us in so all these different scenes. So we actually, I mean, we liked it a lot when we first saw it. We thought it was very well done. Um, but it really was the first time we saw it. We had no idea what they were going to put into that. So the first time you saw it was in a movie theater yeah. filled with oh, people. people. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That, that I cried. <laughs> <laughs> How many times? <laughs> Four or five, anyway. <laughs> when, Naomi, when you were going through your health struggles with migraines and headaches, it, was there ever a moment that you said, you know what, I, maybe this is it. Maybe this is a sign from somewhere that this isn't, powerlifting isn't for me. Did you ever connect the powerlifting to your headaches or were you thinking of them as them as just unrelated events in your life? Um, well, a couple different doctors that I went to tried to say like, oh, we really think it's your powerlifting. But like, I, I don't know, something, I, I just really thought it wasn't powerlifting. And so I got really mad at those doctors when they said, oh, you need to stop powerlifting. And I was like, no, but I mean, we took the two week break. And at the end of the day, um, it did end up being a magnif mag not a magnificent. <laughs> Magnesium. That's the word. I'm sorry. It's been a long day. <laughs> um, right? A magnesium deficiency. <laughs> and so I still take uh, magnesium, and it just totally got rid of the headaches. S yeah, so my mom's just pretty cool. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. The moral of that story, sometimes the extreme method works, but sometimes the less mild method also works. Case in point, Nami's lifting was uh, indirectly the cause of her headaches, but there was some middle ground there that could be fixed, the magnesium deficiency. You could have made Nami stop powerlifting, which she hated, or you could have just given her magnesium to fix the deficiency, which she didn't mind as much. So, Ed, I know that you have a history in powerlifting. I mean, they, they touched on it in the movie. How old were you when you started powerlifting? Oh, I, I was, that's how, I would say about 19. Okay, so you a, were 19. I was, I was a normal age. Right, so <laughs> as a parent, when I was watching this, there were moments when I thought, how did they possibly let their kid do this? Like, she's going to break her back. Or, I mean, I don't know anything about powerlifting before seeing this movie, yeah. but there were moments when I was looking at it going, this looks so dangerous. Mm. How, I mean, what was that decision like in getting her into powerlifting to begin with? Did I mean, you obviously have a background in powerlifting, but how did you feel when he said, let's see if she can do it? Or, like, how was that decision in your family? I thought he was crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, the truth is that a few years before that, I was almost 300 pounds, and I lost a significant, significant amount of weight, um, decided to start eating right and going to the gym. My gym buddy over there. <laughs> Um, and lifting weights, and I knew for sure that this was not going to be a hurtful thing for her. And so one of the things that we stretched before we ever put really any heavy weight on her was you have to have the right form. You have to know what you're doing. And my husband, because he is super strong, truly, um, so 
always spots the kids when they're lifting. So if there was a time that they couldn't handle the weight, he'd pick it up. And as they get stronger and stronger, we have support systems in the weight apparatus so that if they have to, if they have to dump the weight, if they can't pick the weight all the way up, they can just let it come down and they're gonna be okay. And as Naomi said, her only injury ever in powerlifting was that one time with her hamstring. So like any sport, um, you know, soccer, you have head injuries often. You can, you can have injuries in basketball. You can have certainly in contact sports like football or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and if you're someone like me, you trip on nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so at some point, if this is her passion, you know the other thing, how many of us have eight-year-olds that say, I want to try piano, and they try for two weeks, and they never do it again? So I thought, oh, this is going to be one of those things. She's going to try it and say, I don't like that. That's not for me. But the truth was, because she not only loved the physical exercise, but she loved spending time with her dad, which she didn't get to have in any other way, it really became something between the kids and their dad. It was really special, and I wanted them to have that special time because, I mean, who would want to take that away from them? Right, and we, you know, when we looked into it, we didn't. First of all, she started very light and worked up; she just worked up very fast. She was just very good at it. Um, and we certainly did our homework and research. We had to get past that whole uh, lifting will stunt the growth kind of, <laughs> forgive the term, wives' tale, um, when really we found it really was that. There was no truth to that. Um, and just to keep them healthy and safe. So yeah, I always did spot very carefully. And, and I still do. Um, sometimes they spot each other now. They're much bigger now. <laughs> Um, but we st we stay safe, and you know, part of the th part of the reason it's possible at all is just because of my own history. I just haven't had a very well equipped gym in our basement. This wouldn't have been an easy thing to do to show up at a gym with an eight year old and say, "Oh, we, she wants to try powerlifting." Uh, maybe some gyms, but not 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 most of them around here. But it, their circumstance worked out okay for us. Does anyone have any questions in the audience? Oh, a lot of hands. All right, just stand up and yell it out, and I'll repeat it. So the question is, you have five kids in total. How come they weren't in the, the other children weren't in the movie? Because they're really old. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, okay. I've, okay, so me and Ari, so right now he's 14, I'm 16, and then the next one is turning 24 in a few days, and the one after that is 26, and then the oldest one is 31. Yes, they're old. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the two of the old ones did have sort of cameo-ish appearances. Um, oh, yeah. The, their older brother, Mitch, well, saw a guy stick his tongue out at her graduation and to do a selfie with her. That oh was yeah, him. that's my brother. And uh, <laughs> bro brother and sister were sitting next to each other at her bat mitzvah. The oldest one lives in Colorado and married there. She wasn't able to make it for uh, any of the, if, if she was in any of the scenes, and she might have been there, she didn't make it into the film. Go ahead. So the question is, how long did it take the doctors to really diagnose what was going on with the cluster headaches? The doctors didn't really end up diagnosing. <laughs> I, I, you know, I hate to say that, but they really didn't. Uh, we went to infectious disease, we went to gastro, we went to ENT, we went to neurology, we went to neuros we went to a cancer specialist. At one point, we thought she had brain cancer. She ends up having brain tumors. She has them still. They're benign, thank God. Um, it was a gut-wrenching, is that okay to say gut-wrenching? Painful two-and-a-half-year process to get through that, um, to think that your child is that sick. And really, I just kept researching, and I kept hearing that voice in my head. I live with her 24 hours a day. I know her better than any doctor's ever going to know her. I have to pay attention to what she's telling me, both verbally and not verbally. So when we started really analyzing things, and I said to her, I mean, she'd been to the emergency room a couple of times and come home sicker than when she went because of the medicine they gave her. 
um, they would give her medication and honestly made her so spacey. And I know she's a teenager, but oh my goodness, so spacey. I just said, can I try something on my own? Let's research it. I don't want to sound like a witch doctor, but there are some things that you just have to try. And this one was one that worked for her. Yeah. So try magnesium. <laughs> Go ahead. So what is next for Supergirl? Can you? What? <laughs> well, <laughs> let her answer first, and you don't. No, no, go ahead. Um, oh, great question. Basically, I don't know. Um, a lot of I get asked a lot if I'm if I'm going to go to the Olympics, if that's something I'm interested in. Um, but actually, as of now, the only thing they have in the in Olympics is weightlifting, which is different, because that's when you put it over your head. Knowing myself, I'd probably drop it, because I'm not very coordinated. Um, but also, my basement ceiling is definitely not tall enough to practice <laughs> that. So um, Olympics is not in my future currently, I don't think. But I don't know. They have world games which have powerlifting in it, that might be something I'm interested in. It's also every four years. But I really just enjoy powerlifting. It's just like a sport I enjoy doing, whether I'm in local competitions or international competitions. I just, it's something I enjoy doing. So I don't know if I, I mean, you can't really make a career out of it. It's pretty difficult. But I, I think it's more something I really enjoy doing as a hobby and enjoy doing with my family. And yeah. You know, it, when we were watching you, go to these competitions and there's obviously shock from the other competitors and people in the audience that this little girl is coming up. But also you were going to places where there's Confederate flags on the signs and... Uh, well, I could say from my perspective, I think my parents probably have a different one because people probably talk to them more than they talk to me because usually these big men don't like approaching little nine-year-old girls. <laughs> so um, definitely... Uh, the Shabbos issue, so like on Shabbos on Saturday, we can't drive places, so we can't compete on Saturdays, and most competitions are on Saturdays. <laughs> so we have to find competitions that are either during the week or on Sunday, and that can be a tricky process. So I guess in that way, it kind of like interferes, but it's more just whatever. That's how life is. You have to get around it. And yeah, so a lot of times we have to ask the meet directors if I can lift on Sunday, if it's a two-day competition, or that. And a lot of times they are aware, especially now that I'm like, have this movie, and I'm in the news, and a lot of people do know about um, our family when we go to competitions, and they are aware that we're Jewish. Sometimes they'll come up to probably my parents, because they've told me this, that uh, they'll come up to them and say, oh, we've never met a Jewish person, and we thought they were totally different, and they thought that we thought they were mean people, and we thought so-and-so about them. You guys are totally like, normal people. You're chill. It's cool. <laughs> you know, to, to be honest, I, you know, let's see encountering people in the Bible Belt is, is what you were alluding to. Um, I found them to be uniformly very supportive. Um, they respect the fact that we're, um, that we have a lot of people of faith, if you want to put it that way. Um, so, and really they do make every effort to accommodate us. So if there is a, if there can be a multiple days, even, even if most of the people, let's say most of the women are going on Saturday, that they allow her to compete either before or afterward and still count in the results. Or, and even for all of us, I mean, uh, you know, three, three of us, my, my wife does not, but uh, myself, daughter and son do all compete still. If I were actually gonna be competing next weekend on a Sunday competition, so which which is one of our challenges, always finding those Sunday competitions. They, they really do our be their, their best to be accommodating to us. Any other questions? Yes. No, no, no. This is mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
we really believe that um, the tenets of Judaism are very strong and deeply rooted in our family. However, women are powerful and strong, even in the Torah. They are, um, they are really the base that everything comes from. And no disrespect meant to any man, any man. <laughs> It is important that as women living in this century that we recognize that our bodies are temples and that we need to keep them strong and healthy and that I need to give my daughter as well as my son the strength of character and the self-confidence to go ahead and live their life We'd like for them to be Torah Jews. We'd like for them to be Orthodox, but to make their own decisions so that they have the strength of conviction to go out in this world that is sometimes kind of harsh and a little bit abrasive. And that's really our goal as parents, is to provide that for them and give them the best launching point we can give them. And that's what we're trying to do. I'm glad someone else started clapping because I was putting down my mic to clap too. That that was. Thank you for that. No, but I can call her right now to ask her. Unless um, She said I, any question that was asked of her, you guys probably know the answer to. <laughs> I, I can probably answer that. The, the truth is, I'm 54. Um, it took me, I was probably 45, to get to the point that I could say, I don't have to stand in somebody else's shadow and feel protected. It took me till I was 45 to realize that I can cry and it's okay and I'll cry anytime I damn well want to and that's okay. And it took me a long time to realize that I had value as a, as a person, as a woman, as a partner, as a mother and that's shameful. That's shameful that anybody should have to wait that long in their life to feel that kind of empowerment. So I didn't want to keep that from my kids. And I want them to know that bad things happen to good people. Bad things happen to good people. That doesn't mean that you have to react badly to it. It doesn't mean that you have to be squashed by it. It doesn't mean you have to stop living. It means you have to deal with it and move on. And I think that's the important part of that whole scenario. Question in the back. What is the belt used for when you're powerlifting? Well, here, let me try this. Um, it's interesting because your first, the first thought might be it's to support your back, and it really isn't, as probably you were noticing. Really, it actually supports more, more of your abdominals. So when you're, for example, squatting, as you go down, it kind of helps to support you at the bottom, helps for you to come back up again. So, and it also protects anything, what's called your oblique muscles. So it's protective, uh, but not necessarily the way you'd think from the traditional back sorts of support and uh, belts. We're gonna take two more questions. Go ahead. So what percentage of your time you're spending on work, school, powerlifting? What does your day look like? Uh, <laughs> um, well, it's definitely different now than it was when I was in middle school. I mean, now I'm a junior in high school, and junior year is lots of fun, and SATs, and it's a, it's a party. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, my typical day, I mean, I go to... I go to a private Jewish school, so my hours, I get there at 8, I get there at 7.30, and I leave at 
so that's a long, yeah, it's a long day. And then um, I get home, have lots of homework, SAT, tutor, lots of fun. Um, so definitely school takes up a lot of my time and school is my priority over powerlifting because at the end of the day, as much as I love powerlifting and as important as it is in my life, it is a hobby. <laughs> so school does come first. Um, it's very important, so I have to make sure I get all my schoolwork done, but then I still have to get my workouts done, so I end up going to bed probably too late <laughs> at the end of the day. Something has to give a little bit. I might not make the best decision in cutting a little bit of my sleep, but... Don't be like your socializing time. Oh, yeah. I also <laughs> have a social life. <laughs> Crazy busy. Um, and my Sundays are so, so busy. Most A lot of teenagers take Sunday to like relax a little bit, but I have to get up early. I squat, I bench press, I deadlift, and then I actually have a job as a shadow, um, as a shadow for a girl in a friendship circle. So I do that for a few hours, and then I do homework, and I work out. It's like all a balance. I'm not sure if I'm doing the best job, but like I'm doing as well as I can. <laughs> sound like you're doing pretty well to us. <laughs> and one more question. Go ahead. How has the Orthodox community received this film and your story? They love us. They do. <laughs> the truth is we are really, truly, totally blessed because when we interface with other people, we're just people. We're all people. So let's spread the love and not the hate. That's really the bottom line. You can't really end on a better note than that. Mm -hmm.